Hi, welcome to week six of U.S. History Honors, okay? Um, I'm going to review the assignments a bit for this week and just quickly kind of go over what's still open um, and stuff. A lot of you need to bring up your grades, so it's an opportunity to get that work in because once assignments close, they are closed, all right? So hope you had a good weekend, three days off. That's always nice. So let's get started. Um, when you're going into Canvas, all right, um, you can see the week six to-do list. And this week we are doing module one, lesson five, path to citizenship. So there's gonna be a checking for understanding, a notebook that you complete as you go through the lesson, and then a quiz, which you get two attempts, okay? And that's due by this Friday, the 15th. Two, um, two lessons are still open on um, the module one, lesson three, um, checking for understanding, notebook, quiz, that is still open until this Friday. And once it closes, it is done. NBLA has a one week late policy, and then I give that one extra week. And so you already get extended double the time. So again, getting that work in, once it's closed, it will stay closed. And then last week we had the project, the LGBTQ plus movement um, and stuff. And that's worth a lot of points in the summative. So I really encourage you to get that in. That can really help bring up your grade. That's worth a lot of points in the summative category. And that is open until the 22nd. So not this Friday, but next Friday. So let's go to modules. We'll go over what we're doing this week. And we are looking at paths to citizenship, all right? Immigration, citizenship. We are a nation of immigrants, right? Um, it's stuff besides Native Americans and um, it's stuff, but we are definitely a complex nation and one of the most diverse nations in the world. Once you go to module five or module one, lesson five, you're gonna open up that notebook. Once you open it up, I would save it to your Google Drive. I would have a government folder that's really helpful, right? Or not government, sorry, US history folder. I usually teach government, so it's habit. Um, but I would have a folder for each of your classes and save your assignments there, all right? So you can find them. And then again, as I always say, make it shareable, anyone with the link, okay? And that way, um, it's I can open it when you turn it in. Okay, go back over into Canvas. Gives us an overview, the standards, the learning goals, construct arguments regarding the impact of immigration on national identity, evaluate the factors that have shaped national identity. So in the introduction, um, who is a citizen, a lawful permanent resident, an immigrant? Um, they're all people living in the United States, but their legal resident status of each is unique, okay? So looking at the history of our country and how it started, how it's progressed over time, and where are we at now, all right? And the supporting question that we're looking at that we're going to answer by the time we get to um, the journal, right, is how has immigration policy changed? Okay, so looking for that change over time. All right, so you're going to copy and paste how has Im um, immigration policy changed. You go over into your notebook and you can stick that there in your supporting question. Go back over. So there's always five key vocab words, natural, naturalized, dynamic, savior, confer, and asylum. So each of these, what you'll wanna do is you can take the, when it says context, you could take it in the context of the sentence from here and put it in here and then put it in your own words. So for example, naturalized. You're either a citizen born in the US to parents, a naturalized citizen, an immigrant who has special permission to be in the United States for an extended period of time, or an immigrant living in the US without lawful permission, also referred to as an undocumented immigrant, okay? So naturalized is meaning that you were born in this country, so you were born into citizenship, okay? So since birth, you've been a citizen because you were born in this country um, or your parents are citizens of this country. So um, there are ways if you're born out of the country, both your parents are citizens that you can be naturalized also. Okay, so once you take that and put that over here, then your definition, I would just say, um, born um, citizenship through birth. That would be an easy way to put it. So citizenship through birth, that would be an easy way to, um, or through parents. That would be an easy way to summarize it, okay? So this is gonna be longer and you can pull that from the slide and then just kind of breaking it down in simple layman's terms, how would you define it? We're gonna do that with all five, okay? So put the context clue over here and then layman's terms on the right for all five and then you're gonna move on to the key concepts. 
So once we do this, I'm going to go to next key concept. Okay. So I like to look at the questions first um, and stuff. So citizenship, the two major questions you're going to answer in number three. How has Athenian citizenship differed from American citizenship today? Okay. And how has the United States used citizenship as a political tool? Yes, you can go play. I'm, I'm recording. You need to go. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my kids. <laughs> so, all right. So the first question, how has Athenian citizenship differed from American citizenship today? So we're gonna find that here in this first paragraph, the legal status of citizenship can be traced back to, so the concept of citizenship can go all the way back to the Romans and the Athenians, 500 BCE, where if you were a property owner, you were a male of higher status, then you were considered a Greek citizen. Women, slaves, and the poor could not obtain citizenship. In the Roman Empire, we also see the idea of citizenship as they expanded the Roman Empire, started obviously in what is today Italy, went through Greece and all the way around the Middle East and North Africa. One of the ways that they got people to bend to their will and to annex their territory is that they gained citizenship. So the idea that they were treated more as equals, not less than or second class citizens. So it was an incentive. So how has it differed from the US? Well, only property owning elite men, right? In Athenian society, women, the poor and slaves could not be citizens. So you could summarize that, put that here. How has the United States used citizenship as a political tool? Okay, so in the second sentence, with the Declaration of Independence, King George was being very stubborn about people settling in the colonies and if they weren't from Britain, that they basically couldn't gain citizenship even though they were living under British colonial rule. There was no path to citizenship. So one of the tactics that the US government used to get people on the side of the revolution and breaking away was to incentivize, hey, if we break away, you'll be able to have citizenship of the United States, this new America that we're going to form and shape. So over time, citizenship has been used as a tool or an incentive is incentivizing people coming to this country or um, fighting for this country. Path to citizenship. So this is gonna be number four. Path to citizenship. In what ways can a person obtain citizenship in the United States? Birthright citizenship, the process of gaining citizenship in a country because one was born there has sparked numerous debates about the effects of immigration in this country. Should the United States retain birthright citizenship? So one, you're gonna to need to find research and the other one kind of based on the reading, give your opinion. So this top part is gonna talk about the path to citizenship. So what is that like? And this video does a really good job of summarizing that. So watch this video, okay? What does it take to become a citizen and there's a lot involved it's not an easy process okay um i know everyday citizens of this country who are born here that could not pass the citizenship test in fact one of the things you have to do in government is you pass the civics exam which is a version of the citizenship test um and it's just great for people to realize that no work goes into this not just anybody if you immigrate to this country not just anyone can become a citizen work has to go into that for sure okay so watch this video Sorry, I thought I was on the right page. Okay, so you can read through it or watch this video. They do a really good job of breaking down what does that take, all right? Some of the basic requirements, you have to be able to read, write, and speak English. Most countries, that is the case. You have to be able to read, write, and pass a language test uh, for that country. And that's just because if you're going to be a citizen, they want to know that you can um, function and be a contributing member of that society. So if you're speaking completely different language and stuff, that is going to limit you, right? Um, if you're speaking language that is not common in that country, okay? It doesn't mean you can't speak that language, but most countries, in order to become a citizen, you have to pass a language test, a writing test, a reading test, that you are capable of contributing to that society. Okay, to gain citizenship. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be there on a visa or some other status, but to actually gain citizenship. So watch the video. Answer the question, what are some ways that people gain citizenship? And then what do you think about birthright citizenship? Okay, um, do you think that should be guaranteed? Do you think everyone should have to earn their citizenship? Um, you know, maybe your own situation might influence your opinion on it. There's no right or wrong. It's just how do you feel about it? And giving reasons behind that. That's what I ask for is you're, I'm not necessarily looking for a yes or a no or yes, but or no, but but I want to know that you've given it some thought. Immigration quotas. We'll go over this real quick. OK, immigration quotas. Every country, including the United States, has often immigration quotas. Now, a lot of what I find that citizens don't realize is that we have actually the highest immigration 
um, on an annual basis, meaning yearly basis, meaning the number of people that come into our country, okay? We far surpass um, any other country, okay? So um, now that quota changes from time to time and we've seen times in history where we've um, made it really hard to get in this country and we've seen times in history where, um, you know, we are trying to draw people to this country, okay? And stuff like that. But historically speaking, we have, especially over the last hundred years or so, um, we have some of the highest rates of immigration if you compare us to other countries, highest rates of immigration and people living under immigrant status in the United States. So I know immigration is a very hot topic these days, okay? And and there are a lot of problems with our immigration system, 100%. It's a very broken system, very slow. I don't care if you're liberal or conservative. I think we can all agree it's a very broken, um, not user-friendly process, okay? Um, it's done. But anyone who says we don't let people in this country, that's just not true. That's not true, um, whether it be through the borders, through visas, you know, there's asylum, there's a lot of different ways that people come into this country. And we have actually some of the most generous quotas and allowing people in toward citizenship um, than any other country. So if you think that we're not progressive, um, most countries are behind us or much more stringent and strict on than we are on that doesn't mean that you don't think there doesn't need to be changed. So read through some of these, some of the examples of, of um, legislation and things that have been passed in order to limit or to progress immigration. And then finally, calls for reform. And this definitely is a hitting on a topic today. Um, you know, ever since I became an adult, I, the border, immigration, citizenship, it's been a hot topic that I've heard. And I, what I've realized is that it's always been a hot topic. And it's something that our government policies are very much behind. Both parties seem to make, um, Democrats and Republicans seem to make very little progress in this area. So watch this history of immigration since 1965. So it kind of gives you a more present day, like the last 75 years, you know, here's where we're at, here's what's been going on, um, to give some perspective of where we've been, where we're at, and then where are we currently, okay? And it talks about calls for uh, reform and also, um, you know, efforts and changes and issues of regulating the border. Okay, so you will, how has immigration evolved since 1965? Watching that video, um, do you think travel bans are necessary? Explain your reasoning. Um, we see travel bans sometimes from certain countries, um, for maybe because of threats, of um, issues politically with that country, of um, maybe um, terrorist threats, things like that. So um, we do see sometimes restrictions put in place for different reasons. Um, so do you think, that there should be circumstances where we should restrict travel bans, people coming in from other countries and stuff like that. And if so, under what circumstances? Okay. All right. Then we're going to go to next. We're going to do the checking for understanding. So those are review questions based on what you've been over. Usually it's kind of questions three through uh, six that it covers. And again, these are great reviews. Not only do you get a grade for it, you can redo it as many times as you need. So you should get 100% on it. But then um, you can use those questions to review for the quiz. And then finally, we have the primary source. Okay, so this is something dealing directly with immigration. This document is um, from Arizona 2010. And it's a specific law or bill that was passed in Arizona dealing with immigrants, in particular, on um, people who are undocumented here illegally. OK, so what they do. So I would read this summary, go through the intent, skim through some of you don't have to read the entire thing, but skim through, you know, every other page, skim through some of um, the legislation. OK, how it works, what can be done um, and what it's meant to do within the state of Arizona. And then title it here. What's it about? It's about immigration in the state of Arizona, right? What's unique about it? You're getting to see the entire um, the entire bill. Summarize maybe a couple different parts of it, intense, okay? And then overall, what is this legislative doing? Is it cracking down on that? Is it being more lenient? Um, and like, what's the consequence, or what is the what's the purpose of the bill? Okay. And then your last two sections, you'll do your journal. Okay, going back to the original question, what is the current, uh, what is the current view of immigration in the United States? And then wrapping this up. Okay, I'm fine with one paragraph for the journal and the thinking about questions are totally fine. Once you're done, 
you will submit them here in the notebook, the Path to Citizenship page. And then you have the quiz, okay? Which again, you get two attempts, okay? Here, let me change that really quick. Let me make sure. So, multiple um, nope, let me see. Allow multiple attempts. Two. Okay. If you have any questions, please email me. Feel free to reach out to me. And also remember, I'm available on Wednesdays from um, four until five o'clock. Okay. So if you have any questions, oh, sorry. Yes, four till five o'clock. So if you have any questions or if you need anything, um, then you are welcome to reach out to me. Um, come to that live meet. I'm happy to help you. Okay, all that information is right here. So available from four to five, there's the code. All right, and I would love to see you. All right, especially if you're struggling in the class, which I know a lot of you are. Okay, so please, um, you've got to get that work in because end of the quarter, it will be too late. Things are not going to reopen and I've already extended them. All right, have a wonderful day and let me know if you have questions. Thank you.